Good morning, everyone. Let's try that again. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Perfect. Hi, I'm Donovan Brown, Principal DevOps Manager from Microsoft. I'm here with Aaron again. You're the third time you're going to be on the show. Thank you so much for coming back. For those who haven't seen you yet, tell us what you do here. Thanks, Donovan. Uh, Aaron Bjork, I'm a Principal Group Program Manager. I work on the Visual Studio Team Services team, and I look after all of our investments in Agile Project Management, uh, work item tracking, reporting, and uh, analytics. Goodness. Well, last time you were here, we had this funny conversation right after we recorded about you really wanted to show us how we do our release notes for VSTS. So we thought we'd have you back again, and you'd be able to walk us through the mechanics and how we do this here at Microsoft. And right. I think you're actually going to show us some stuff this time. Yeah, right? absolutely. I think, All right, cool. Yeah. So um, maybe to set the stage a little bit to kind of talk about what we're doing, um, we operate the, the VSTS team in a three-week sprint. Yep. So uh, that's the model we've been on for quite a few years now. Uh, we are in the middle of sprint 125, okay. right, to give you some perspective. At the end of every one of those sprints, we release an update to the service. And when we do that, we author a set of release notes that go with it. So I'll, I'll kind of show you how that looks now. Okay. Um, if I'm on the visualstudio.com uh, team services page, so if you went up to visualstudio.com and navigated to team services, you'll notice up here at the top, we have a little bit of a, a news menu there and I can click on product updates. Great. Now, what this is, is this is kind of a, a home page for those product updates where we're aggregating the feed of all of them. But if I were to click into one, and I'm going to use uh, Sprint 123 as, as our example today. So if I click into uh, Sprint 123, you'll see what we call our release notes. And this is, you know, you can think of it as like a blog post um, where we are telling you everything that was delivered in that three-week increment. Got so it. what's changed to the service in the last three weeks. And um, you know, we kind of organize it by sections, and as I'm scrolling here, you can just see it. There's a lot there. Like, yes. There's a lot going on here, you know, and a lot, uh, a lot of content, a lot of changes. Absolutely. So what I'm gonna kind of walk, walk you through today is, is how we assemble this and okay. sort of the process that we, we follow. Because I think okay. one of the interesting things about this is that um, this is not a process that's created, or not a blog post that's created by a bunch of writers. Um, it's created by the team, okay. and it's just um, essentially curated from data that we put into our work items. So okay. it kind of shows up very, very naturally in, in our day-to-day -day flow. So is your definition of done for an item then says you have to have these release notes? A absolutely, yeah. Okay. So um, you, don't, you don't have to have them because not everything that we do is going to have them. And, okay. and we could maybe jump into that a little bit. but. Um, when an item is completed and when it sort of moves into the done column on your Kanban board and you're going to mark it as completed, um, we have a, a field that we have on our feature work items okay. where we indicate, yes, I need release notes, and then there's a set of criteria that comes with that, what, what's expected of you. Okay, so give me an example of something that wouldn't need release notes. Sure, so um, we might be uh, doing some performance improvements okay. to like, uh, like the query experience, gotcha. and that's real work. Um, it's, it's going to take time. Uh, we've planned it out. We know what we're trying to achieve. We're actually measuring uh, before and after, so we can validate that we've done a good job with sure. that. But it's not something that we're necessarily going to blog about. We're just going to make that happen, and you know, bingo, you're going to get faster queries. Or gotcha. whatnot. So that might be an example. Um, another example are there, are there are features that we're completing, which are kind of a, a set, if you will, okay. uh, you know, a group that comes together. And, as you and I have talked about before, we have a, a mechanism that we call feature flags, yes. which is essentially flighting. It's how we uh, control the exposure of a feature to a set of customers. And so you might have you know, kind of chapter one of a feature and then chapter two or chapter three, and it's not until chapter three that we're gonna flip the flag and turn it on to all stages. Got it. And therefore, uh, those earlier features are not gonna have release notes. Got they're it. still done. Uh, they're still completed. We're, we're probably using them in our dog food environments. We're just not talking to the world about them. Got it. So the release notes is the identification that we are done. We're going to show this to new people. This is new functionality that we need to make you aware of. That's right. And that's when we're now going to flip that flag that says, I want to have, I need release notes on this particular item. Yeah, that's all right, right, great. So you're yeah. going to be able to show us how we actually do all that stuff internally, right? Yep. So uh, the, the, the experience we're going to walk through is if we, we take this um, Sprint 123 deployment, which happened back on September 15th, okay. um, and I'm going to just start with the, the first item on the page here, which is our new queries experience. So 
uh, people would say, like, how did you know to put all this there and how did it show up? Well, uh, let me switch tabs. And the, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move over to our own account on VSTS. So as you know, and we've talked about, we use the product to build the product. Yes. It's a little bit of a chicken and an egg thing, depending <laughs> on how you look at it. Um, but this is a, a delivery plan that I have, which looks across four of the teams that I look after. Okay. So those teams names are WitIQ, WitPi, WitX, and Modern Wit. Um, you can see the, the marker out here that we're halfway through Sprint 125. I'm going to open up the WitIQ lane, and I'm going to go back to Sprint 123. And you'll notice the top item here is a card that's called New Queries Experience. Okay. And if you look real close, you'll see it says Release Notes Needed Yes. Got it. Now, I'm going to open that particular item up, so we'll just drill into it. And, and this is the feature work item that we use. It's based on the out-of-the-box feature work item, but it does have some modifications. Got it. And what are the, two of the modifications that I'm going to point out is we have this deployment section we've added, and there's a simple toggle there for do you need release notes for this particular feature. And then there's a, um, a rich text field here, which is where you can essentially author the release notes. Got it. So some features have this. Some features don't. And this is a great example of, of one that does. And do you set that flag when you create the work item knowing it's going to need release notes? Or is that something that you turn on or turn off after it's been created and been worked on? Yeah, I would say most of the time. I would say the majority of the time when you're creating the feature or you're kind of putting it, hey, we're going to think we're going to finish it in this sprint, you, most of the time you don't set it. Because oh, okay. you're, you know, you, it's something that you kind of do at the end that validates, yes, we are shipping this thing. Got it. Now I'm going to do it. But I would say a lot of people actually set it ahead of time and then maybe turn it off if we determine the feature's not quite ready. Got it. Okay. I will say one of the practices where we don't do this um, religiously, and I think we're trying to get better at it, but I love the idea of when you create a feature, you don't just write a description for it. You write the release notes. Essentially, you write the press release for how we're going to talk to customers about the feature before we started it. And I think it's an awesome forcing function just to get into the mindset that this is a part of your job. It's and, hard. And yeah, it is. It, <laughs> and it actually makes you think about how you would talk to customers about a piece of functionality. I've been working on this Visual Studio Team Services a module for PowerShell. And I've been forcing myself to go write the documentation for every function I add before I write the function. And it makes me think about it differently. Right. It makes me think about the parameters differently. And I don't have this, oh, now i got to go write the docs, or now i got to go write the help. I've already done that. Now yeah. I get to go do the fun part, which yeah. is implemented to match that. So yeah. I've been trying to do the same thing. That's why I know it's hard, because it's like, I just want to start writing code, right? I don't want to have to go write this yeah. stuff. Right? It's kind of, it's almost similar. It's almost like a TDD practice, almost. where you sort of write tests and then write code, you know, and um, it's similar to that. So. I w again, I wouldn't say it's a mandated practice, but um, I think it's a good approach. Oh, agreed. Doing this. Agreed. Yeah. Okay. So now, what I, what I think I'll do here is I'll just kind of show you. This is what um, Lauren, who is our, our PM on this particular feature, wrote for the release notes. And you can see if you kind of stare at it, the Queries Hub has a new look and feel, changes in navigation. She's talking about it. Mm -hmm. um, if I if I moved over to the actual release notes again, so switching screens, you'll see here that the text is pretty much the same. Like. Um, I'm not going to tell you it's word for word because we do do some curating and authoring of this okay. as we pull it all together. Got it. But for the most part, um, the release notes kind of write themselves because you take all the features that have that flag set, mm -hmm. you take all the release notes out of them, and you just organize them. Okay, so uh, that is that, have you automated that process? Because that could be a laborious process of having to go find all those guys. And yeah, do that. yeah. So um, I wouldn't say automated, uh, okay. but we have a process that we follow. So okay. let, me, let me show you that. Um, when we get to the end of the sprint, we have a, um, a set of activities that we do at the end of the sprint, uh, beginning and end of sprints. Okay. And those activities are kind of directed by a few people in our org that we call release PMs. Okay. So um, Alex Nichols is one of our release PMs. He's kind of like the, what I think of as like the director of the orchestrator of how do we assemble this across 40 teams? Right. You know, how do you do that? You gotta have, you gotta have one guy in charge or sure. one gal in charge of that process yes, who's on the hook. Sure. So, so um, Alex is the person that does that for us. So you can see here, um, and I'm, I'm just looking at my email here, um, at the end of the sprint, and I'll kind of I'll kind of jump around a little bit here to show you this, but this is this is a mail that he would have sent near the end of the sprint, and he says, hey, we're getting ready to uh, publish sprint 123, and I've gone through and I, you know, here's the schedule, here's what we're doing. And I've gone through and I've run a query 
to show me all the features that have the release notes flag set to yes. Okay. Okay. Now, there, I have assume that a query has more than just that one criteria. Is it also like this sprint, this iteration, plus that? Because yeah, it's exactly so. Okay. Okay. The, the query is essentially um, it has to be marked as being delivered in this sprint. Okay. okay. It has to be marked completed. Okay. Okay. So we're not going to do it for in progress items. Awesome. And um, and then it has to have the release notes field set. So those are the three criteria. Got it. And then yeah. that, uh, what pops up is this sprint's work that yep. is done that it has release notes required. Yeah. Got so it. you can see here in his email even, he says sprint 123 release notes feature as of now. Got it. Okay. So he's saying as of this date, here's what we've got. Um, and then what he does is then a couple days pass and people take action. And then he's going to follow that back up with uh, another mail. And the next mail is going to say, let me switch to it here. Yeah, because that first email is like a wake-up call for me when I'm like, hold on, I don't see things I know that we plan to ship. Yep. I better go and, and take action on that. Yep. Okay. So now he, he comes back and he says, okay, now here's the actual list of everything that we've got. And you see that we've gone from sort of 10 items to, to quite a few more. Sure. Um, and, and again, Alex is managing all this through a query, right? Mm -hmm. um, he, this is fairly easy for him to assemble because the data is all there for him. And uh, just to kind of show you how that looks, I'll, I'll click on the query. You can see here, um, here is the query that he's running. Okay. And you can see all the items that are coming out of it. Um, and if you see uh, new queries experience, there's that same work item yep. that we were looking at before and you can see it showing up. Okay. So, so if I just kind of bounce through all these, you can see the release notes uh, field changing as I move through those. And I would be able to find these somewhere on the release notes of that sprint so, and yeah. in some form. Maybe like you said, maybe not word for word, but very similar to what we're seeing yeah. here. Yeah, so like we have one here called keyboard shortcuts in the work item form. And you can see there's some release notes written for it. And if I switched back, here's the new queries, uh, moving down keyboard shortcuts Got it. in the work item form. So okay. they're all there. Got right? it. There's a one-to-one -one mapping. Awesome. Here. That's right. But you keep saying they're not going to be word for word the same. So what yeah. happens be, before they get to okay. the website? So what's going to happen then is um, Alex runs that query. He takes yep. all that content and he assen essentially assembles it into a markdown file. Okay. And then um, we just start a review process using pull requests sure. to uh, make updates. Okay. So what Alex will do is he will kind of look at all the content and he'll say, hey, most of the content for this particular set of release notes comes out of like, Aaron's area, like my area, for example. And he's, he'll say, you know, Aaron, because of that, we want you to put your name on the release notes, and we want you to do um, kind of some lightweight editing to make sure that the, the, the tenor of the release notes, the voice is consistent, and that you're comfortable putting your name on the message. Like, That's funny, because I, I remember I've seen Jamie Cool's name. He used to be my manager. I'm like, and he wrote all this stuff? And yeah. I was wondering, and so now we understand it's like, who has the lion's share of the message yeah. that we're shipping? Yeah. You're going to go put your name on this and put your yeah. skin in the game. Yeah, or, or you could think of it as like, who has the headliner? So like, if we gotcha. go back to Sprint 123, I think in this case, um, the headliner was multi-phased builds. Okay, sure. it wasn't the item we're talking about. Got and if it. I just zip to the bottom, it was Jamie that yep. authored these release notes. Right. You know? So he did a, a little bit of an edit pass and making sure. You know, Alex gets a setup for success there, and sure. then we kind of do the, the final mile on it. Um, okay. And then there's, there is a set of um, reviews that we'll do as well. So I'll kind of show you how that works. Okay. Um, let me actually stay there and move back to my mail. And I'm going to show you that um, Alex is going to come back and say, okay, here's a follow-up mail. The release notes are sort of um, staged and they're ready because you can, you can see that he's talking about that now. Right. Okay. And then he's going to say, go provide comments on uh, this particular pull request. So he creates the pull request. And here is where you'll, um, we kind of do that, that process of just making edits and reviewing. So you can, you know, see, come through here and see what people have said, what they've commented. And, you know, we're, we're making changes along the way. So yep. you can see even Jamie's making some changes. And, sure. Uh, you know, uh, submitting edits and commits back to the PR. So is this repo that contains the markdown file in the same project and same repo as VSTS or is this separate? So as of Sprint 123, it's in a separate repo, separate repo in a separate project. Okay. Uh, before it was in a separate repo in, in the, the same, same project. project. 
And just for a variety of reasons, we decided to kind of decouple that and okay. have a smaller project where we just do this. Okay, so. got it. So we run the query out of the main VSTS project. We yep. then create this markdown file, which then gets deployed or deposited into a repo inside of here. Yep. Now, and I guess it's just a new file for every single one of them, or is it the file the same name? I'm just curious now. Yeah, there's a convention that we follow, but more or less it's a new file for each one of them. Gotcha. And there's a set of images that go with it. Sure, and all that. sure. So, so it's there, easy to there's package a, that. Yeah, there's a structure and everything that we follow. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. So then we go through this process of cleaning up this markdown file. And then Alex is the person who then goes and finally publishes it to the website like we saw before. Yeah, and at that point, um, once we're done, uh, we, we, we publish it. You can see people come through and sort of uh, you know, check off that they've reviewed it, that we're good. And then we publish it live to the web. And gotcha. um, at that point, you know, we, uh, uh, we, uh, we tweet about it. Sure. You know, we tell people that it's going there. You can subscribe to the RSS feed. But, uh, but that is the end-to-end -end process. And I think one of the... The keys that we find that really makes this work is that, again, like you kind of said earlier, this is just a part of your definition of done. It's something that um, is, not, is not a separate team doing this documentation. These are the actual people writing the actual features, writing the actual content that right. we're going to use to talk to customers about. So it kind of completes that cycle. Right, and you can't get any better than the person who wrote it to make sure that all the cool stuff right, that might get forgotten if I'm not the person who wrote it, that Intimi understands it's going to be able to share in the release notes yep. as well. So, yep. no, this has been really interesting because a lot of people struggle with that. I can't tell you how many times I go to a customer and like, well, we need help generating release notes, right? I'm like, yeah. well, I didn't really have a good answer for them. And using our own tools, it sounds like it's, it's a process, but like you said, it's not fully automated, right? So, have you, or is Alex or is someone on the team, because I know the more you do something, yeah. the more itchy you become at trying to automate as much as you possibly so, can. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll put some words in Alex's mouth. <laughs> Alex has been driving this process for us for, uh, I'm going to say three or four months. Okay. Um, we've been doing this process for years. He's come in, though, and really added um, a, lot, a lot more to it. So, like, doing this through PRs is not something that we did six months ago. We used to do it in Word Docs. Interesting. Um, the query that we followed and, and some of the formality was all, all, always there. But I think Alex is um, is working to make more and more of that automated. So um, I would say yes, we're always looking to make this easier and better. And uh, I can't articulate the exact next steps sure. that we'll take, but um, you know, definitely. Yeah, generating on markdowns is not difficult to do from code because I, I, I obviously I use the API that we have a lot, right? Yeah. For two, two or three projects that I'm working on, I'm thinking to myself, I could run that query, I could download that, yeah, you know, I could yeah, get that yeah. field, I could yeah. actually automate some you of that. You should for just you. pull it off and send it to Alex, and you make it. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I always have a pleasure when you're here, man, and it's great. great. And I'm, hopefully, we'll have you back, and we'll talk about some more stuff. Sounds good. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Donovan. See you later.